Hey guys, today we are going to start looking at transformations of quadratic functions, and we're primarily going to look at these transformations and function notation. So let's do a quick review of function notation really quick. So remember, this reads as f of x. All of f of x is the same thing as y, or the y coordinate. So if we change f of x, we are doing a vertical change since y or f of x is the vertical coordinate. And then x is just the x coordinate, which is the horizontal coordinate. So if we do any changes inside the parentheses, we're changing x. So that's gonna be a horizontal change. Remember, y and f of x are interchangeable. Okay, so now that we've reviewed function notation and f of x is the same thing as y, so that's vertical changes inside the parentheses as horizontal changes, we can start looking at some of these. The first thing that we're gonna look at is the quadratic parent function. This is the quadratic parent function because it is the most basic parabola. Just f of x equals x squared. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in Desmos because Desmos will remember what f of x is and allow me to make transformations to f of x. So that's the quadratic parent function. You can see it here too. It has a vertex at zero, zero. We have an axis of symmetry on the y axis. So the axis of symmetry is x equals zero. And our range is zero and everything greater than it. So our range is y is greater than or equal to zero. So that is the quadratic parent function and our transformations are going to be made to that. So on all of these graphs, I've put the quadratic parent function and then we're gonna sketch the change to it. So let's look at f of x plus two. This is outside the parentheses. I'm changing all of f of x. So I know this is gonna be a vertical change. Let's put this in Desmos and see what happens. So f of x plus two looks like I shifted up. So I know based on how the screen looks, sometimes it can look like the parabola got smaller. It did not, it just shifted up two, so it got cut off a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to sketch this. Looks like we just shifted up two. So I have a point here, here, and here, and I'm just moving all of those points up two. So there is the sketch of my new parabola. So this is a vertical translation up to. And our vertex changed to zero two. Our axis of symmetry did not change, but since the vertex changed, that changed our range. This time it's y is greater than or equal to two. So whenever we add outside the parentheses, that is a translation up. Okay, let's look at this next one. So I'm still outside of the parentheses, so I'm gonna assume that it's another vertical transformation, but let's see what happens. This time it looks like I moved down two, which makes sense because the plus two outside the parentheses was up, this one is down. So translation down two. And let's go ahead and graph that. So here's three points from the original parabola and I'm just moving each of those down two. And if you wanna move these points down too, you can too. Okay, so there's a sketch of my new transformed parabola. So my new vertex, it looks like it's at zero, negative two. My axis of symmetry didn't change, but my range did. This time it's negative two and everything greater than it. Okay. 
Okay, so if we subtract outside of the parentheses, that is a translation down. Okay, now we are moving to inside the parentheses, so I'm changing the x coordinate, so that's going to be a horizontal change. So I am doing f of x plus 2 inside the parentheses first. And I can see that from the blue to the green, my parabola moved left to translation left to horizontal. So my vertex, it looks like I just moved left to and then these two points moved to left as well. So there's the new parabola. So my new vertex, it moved from 0, 0 to negative 2, 0. And my range is still y is greater than or equal to 0, like this parent function. I didn't change the range at all. But what did change was my axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry is no longer the y-axis. It is x equals negative 2. All right, so when we add inside the parentheses, that is a horizontal translation, and it is a translation left. Remember, inside the parentheses is kind of opposite of what you would think. If we're adding to, you would assume that we move right, but it actually moves left inside the parentheses. Okay, I have another addition or subtraction inside the parentheses, so I think it's going to be a horizontal translation. Let's see which way it moves this time. Looks like we moved right to. So x minus 2 inside the parentheses is a horizontal translation right to. So let's go ahead and plot that. I just moved these three points to the right to. So there's my new parabola. Okay, so my vertex changed from 0, 0 to 2, 0. And then range did not change from the parent function. The range is still y is greater than or equal to 0 for both of these. But the axis of symmetry changed from the parent function to this new transformed one. My axis of symmetry is at x equals 2 now. Okay, so inside the parentheses when I subtract, that is a translation right. So those were all of the translations. When we add or subtract, we're just shifting the parabola either up, down, left, or right. And then horizontal translations change the axis of symmetry. Vertical translations change the range. And both of them, the translation is always changing the vertex. Now let's look at whenever we are multiplying either the function or just the x value by something. So let's start with this one. I'm taking f of x and I am making it negative. And as you can see, it just flips the function over the x-axis. This is a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so let's graph this reflection and then we can think about if anything changed. So my vertex, when I reflect it over the x-axis, it stays where it is. When I reflect this point over the x-axis, it goes right there. When I reflect this point, it goes right here. 
So there's the new transformed parabola as we could see on the Desmos calculator too. So my vertex stayed the same, my axis of symmetry stayed the same. However, my range is totally different. On the parent function, the range is y is greater than or equal to zero. On the transformed function, it is y is less than or equal to zero. So it changed from y is greater than or equal to zero to y is less than or equal to zero. So when we had that negative out front, it was a reflection or a flip. Okay, now we're going to multiply by some numbers inside and outside the parentheses. Let's look at what happens with this first one, 2 times f of x. So when I multiply by a number bigger than 1, my parabola, first of all, I can see it just got skinnier. So it's outside the parentheses, the transformation that's happening. So I know that it is a vertical transformation. So let's think about if this is a vertical stretch or compression. And let's graph this. Maybe I can get some points from Desmos to help me. So I was at zero, zero. I still am at zero, zero for my vertex. And then what I did was I took this Y value that was at one and then I multiplied it by two. So this Y value, the F of X, I'm multiplying all the Y values by two. That's what the function notation was telling me to do. So it goes from one to two for that Y value. So there is the new skinnier parabola. Okay, so I'm changing it vertically. I'm either compressing it or I'm stretching it. And in this case, to make it skinnier, it is a vertical stretch. I pulled the parabola like that. I stretched it. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor of two. My vertex stayed the same, my axis of symmetry stayed the same, and the range is even the same. I'm just changing the shape of the parabola and making it skinnier. So now I'm still multiplying outside the parentheses with this one, but I'm going to multiply by one half instead of two. And from the blue to the green, this time it looks like I got wider. So let's think about why it got wider. This is telling me to take my y values and multiply them by one half. So the y value of the vertex is zero and zero times one half is still zero. So vertex stays where it is. This y value was originally one and when I do one times one half, it becomes one half. Same thing here, the y value is one. I multiply it by one half. So that's why it becomes wider. Okay, and this is a vertical compression. We were taking that parent function and we are compressing it. So this is a vertical compression by a factor of one half. So when we multiplied by a number bigger than one, it got skinnier. When we multiplied by a number less than one, it got wider. Let's see if that holds true whenever we multiply inside the parentheses. And this time, instead of vertically compressing and stretching it, like we were here, we're going to be horizontally compressing or stretching it. We're gonna be squeezing the parabola this way. So let's see what f times 2x does, f of 2x. So I definitely got skinnier. It looks like I might have gotten more skinnier than the other one. Um, but the same thing held true when I multiplied by a number bigger than 1. It just made that parabola skinnier. So 
So let's think about why. So I'm going to make a little table down here of three points. My x values, the original f of x values, and then the f of one half x, or sorry, f of two x values. And remember, f of x equals x squared. So I'm going to use these three points right here. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. So I just did negative 1 squared and got 1. I did 0 squared and got 0 and then one squared and got one. So that's where those came from, just plugging into the function. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in two times x to the function. So it would be two times negative one squared here, which is really just two squared, which is four. So this one changes from one, negative one, one to negative one, four. And then I'm plugging in 2x to this, so it'd be 2 times 0 squared, which is just 0 squared, so 0. So this one stays where it's at this point. And then this point here, I'm going to do 2 times 1 squared, which is 2 squared, so 4. Okay, so that's why it got so much skinnier, is because it got 4 times skinnier instead of 2 times skinnier. So the horizontal transformation is a little bit more dramatic here. So this was a horizontal, and let's think about if it was a stretch or compression. So if I'm horizontally changing it, I would have to squeeze it like this to make it skinnier. So it's a horizontal compression by a factor of two. Okay, the same thing is gonna happen with this one, but I'm changing the X values by one half, and as we can see, it gets wider, and it looks like it's getting a little bit wider than when the one half was outside the parentheses. So we know that it is getting wider. And if we think about this same concept, us plugging in one half times the X value, so the x value here is one, and I would do one half times one squared, which would equal one four. So this y value is gonna go from one to one fourth. And then the vertex is not gonna change because the zero y value won't change. And then this one would go to one fourth as well. So it's kind of the same thing that happened with the other one. I just didn't want to make a table, but that explains why it gets wider than the vertical transformation. So this was a horizontal. It's either going to be a stretch or compression to make it wider horizontally. It is a stretch. So this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of one half.